Good morning friends. Welcome to Sharachandra IAS Academy Daily Current Affairs Analysis for the date of 4th May 2022. The topics for today are about the India-Denmark Business Forum meeting attended by Prime Minister of India, about the prison reforms in India, third topic is about the solid waste management in India, fourth topic is about University Grants Commission guidelines to tackle the mental issues among the children. Fifth is about the Registrar General of India. Coming to the first topic about the India Denmark Business Forum meeting. So, Prime Minister Narendra Modi attended the forum meeting in. Uh, so this forum meeting has been attended by our Prime Minister and at the same time Frederickson of the Denmark. Okay. So the meeting the main point about the meeting is if you see complementary skill sets of the two economies and ask the Danish businesses to take the advantage of India's worst prospects okay so here the main concentration is about to increase the economic relations between two countries so if you see uh, when compared to us or russia or uh, some other uh, australia or japan when we compare the india's relation with such countries the relations with denmark are not at, uh, not up to that level uh, and uh, very recently for example if you see for almost a decade there were no relations uh, in 2021 miss Frederickson came to india she visited india after that the india and denmark relations progressed only after uh, the denmark prime minister danish prime minister in 2021 visited india and she also launched some green strategic partnership for the delivery of sustainable development solutions like that so so from 2021 if you see the relations between denmark and india are rising so this is the trend that you must have an idea of the trend of the relations with any other country so some fit for with some countries the relations might be in decreasing trend with some countries the relations might be in increasing trend so here we can uh, definitely say that with denmark our relations india's relations are in the increasing trend so if you see uh, the visit of uh, Danish Prime Minister Frederickson in uh, 2021 and visit of Indian Prime Minister to Denmark in 2022. So by which we can say that both the countries are very serious about increasing their economic relations. So they want, uh, so India is asking Denmark to take the advantage of India's prosperous green technologies, coal chains, waste to wealth, shipping and ports among others. So at the same time Modi also emphasized the business friendly stance of India okay, and urge both the corporates of the both sides to take the advantage of India's vast resources and uh, establishments in, uh, indirectly is uh, telling the Danish companies to come and invest in India in the form of foreign direct investments. Okay. So she, uh, Prime Minister Frederickson also said that uh, in order to means she emphasizes that the business community must bridge the gap between two nations as i said you there are uh, increasing trend uh, if you see recently recently if you see the mean there are memora memorandum of understanding was signed between reliance industries and danish company stadel fuel technology so means law day by day the cooperation between indian companies and danish companies are increasing thus you must have an idea that's it and uh, Danish companies have more uh, means if you see comparatively when compared to Indian companies, Danish companies with uh, niche technologies or expertise and offered India to meet the air pollution control targets because you know we have the problem of air pollution like stubble burning uh, or uh, decreasing of air quality index around Delhi and other cities. So by using this Danish technologies we can cope up with such problems. Okay, so. That is the reason why if you see here both the countries uh, or means the representatives of the businesses as well as the green technology innovation digitization 
came, comes to the mind when you talk about the green technology and the companies of renewable energy, energy dependence, companies related to agriculture, water and environment, infrastructure, transport and service, all, they all met in this, uh, so these are the topics which have been discussed in this so and so forum, okay. Then moving on to the next topic. So, sorry, uh, in this first topic, you must keep in mind that with the Denmark, India is trying to increase its economic relation, business activity, and India is also trying to engage more and more cooperation between Indian corporate companies and uh, Denmark corporate companies. So, that's the, that, that's the main point you have to remember here. So, these are the fields of cooperation in which fields we are going to cooperate with each other these are the fields of cooperation so you must remember these points that's it next coming to the prison reforms in india so the context is prime minister modi recently raised the issue of overcrowding of overcrowding of indian prisons and need for reform in indian prisons so if you see what is the status of indian prison it is overcrowding understaffing underfunding these are the three major re three major reasons for the uh, problems in indian prisons the ncrb national crime record bureau was published uh, was uh, statistics was collected for the year of 2016 however it was published in 2019 so the uh, this uh, report was published in 2019 ncrb report uh, but it studied the uh, statistics of 2016 according to this if you analyze the statistics in 2016 produced by ncrb report of 2019 then we will get to know the real plight of the indian prisoners because if you see the under trial population it was one of the largest in the world one of the largest in the world this is very uh, sad used to be known because the under trial population are not the prisoners who were convicted they were under trial so that means they the case has not yet been completed they are in jail only on the ac accusation okay so with more than half of all the trials being held less than six months in 2016 so this is uh, one plight of indian prisoners where most of them are under trials that is one point so if you see there are 4,33,033 inmates in the prison at the end of 2016 with 68% of them under trials. So more than 50 means more than of 68% are under trials. Okay. So a huge amount of population are un under trials. So that is more than 50%. So this shows high number of uh, under trials in the overall jail population may be due to the either the reasons might be wrongful errors or inadequate legal representation during the remand year okay so we can say that the delays in the judicial process also causes these under trials to uh, stay in jails or some wrongful errors also causes these under trials to stay in jails so what are the issues first people in preventive detention okay so particularly uh, recent as an example uh, Jammu Kashmir is taken as an example in Jammu Kashmir but throughout the India there are preventive detention cases have been filed uh, and they are rising day by day the preventive detention cases have been rising in India so particularly in Jammu Kashmir the number of people detained under the preventive detention is on rise so if you see when compared to 2015 in 2016 there is 300 percent rise that means in 2015 only 90 90 uh, 90 members were arrested under preventive detention whereas in 16 431 members were arrested under preventive detention showing the 300 percent rise so the government or the authorities government authorities are utilizing this uh, administrative detention which is also known as preventive detention to retain the people without the charge or trial so by circumventing the normal criminal justice procedures okay so this detention does not demand normal criminal justice procedures so they can be easily overcome or easily uh, sidelined by the administrative officers so that's the reason why these preventive detention cases are on rise day by day and most of them most of the prisoners does not have idea of what is section 436a of crpc so under section 436a of crpc this section is introduced 
is introduced in criminal procedure code in order to deal with the under trials okay very very important section to be remembered section 436a of crpc it is saying that if suppose a person is arrested for a for any crime okay if under trial okay the <coughs> crime has not yet been proved so if a person is arrested say suppose if the person is arrested for a crime where the pun maximum punishment mentioned is say 7 years okay say 7 years if the maximum punishment mentioned for the crime accused means the accused is arrested in so and so xyz case if in that case if in that crime the maximum punishment is 7 years then he cannot be under trial he cannot be under trial for more than 3.5 years that is off okay that is off means he cannot be under trial for more than half of the maximum punishment mentioned for that particular crime so if a person has been arrested on some accusation where the maximum punishment is 7 years then he cannot he can stay under trial he can stay under trial in the jail without uh, without being provided by the bill only up to 3.5 so once he, he has completed 3.5 and if the case is still pending then he has to be released either on bail with or without surety okay this is the importance of section 436a so this is particularly uh, passed or introduced only to tackle with the only to deal with the plight of the under trials okay the court so this but at the same time even the section 436a because of unawareness of the prisoners about this 436a the implementation was not proper because if you see there is a disparity between the number of convicts eligible and number of persons being released so all the eligible persons under 436a are not being released so if you see only 929 out of 1 uh, 1500 929 out of 1500 are being released under section 436a okay in 2016 that means even though 1500 1557 members were eligible but only 929 were released okay so according to the amnesty india study prison staff are often unaware of this section at all ex uh, section at all okay and they at the same time even though they are aware they are hesitant to enforce it right so prisoners even leave about the prisoners the prison staff are not aware of section 436a even they know this section they are hesitant to enforce it this is said by amnesty india's study and between 2015 to 2016 the ncrb report is saying that more number of unnatural deaths are being occurred in prison that means the number has doubled from 115 to 231 within one year 115 in 2015 231 in 2016 Wh more number of unnatural deaths doubled so this like almost suicide rates are also increasing so 28 percent hike from 77 in 2015 to 102 in 2016 so suicide rates are increasing unnatural deaths are increasing people are all and all the eligible persons are not being uh, released under 436a and according to the nhrc a person see according to the nhrc national human rights commission a person is 1.5 times more likely to commit the suicide in prison than they are outside okay this could be a sign of serious mental health issue that means the uh, the chances to commit the suicide is increased by 50 percent for any person who go to the prison so at the same time there are no means not enough mental health professionals are being provided in the jails okay if you see there was only one mental health expert for every 21,650 inmates which is a huge number okay one expert for 21,650 inmates is uh, very very huge uh, number where a single person cannot take care of 21,650 so with psychologists or psychiatrists available only in six states and one union territory so out of total states only six states are and one ut is providing for psychologists and uh, psychiatrists so and, and uh, 
if you see more point that is ncrb report says that more 6000 around 6000 people with mental illness were in prison in 2016 so generally our uh, statute say that the mental mental illness person shall not be imprisoned he shall be sent to the hospitals actually they must be treated once their mental illness is proper means uh, they are treated with this mental illness and only when their mental condition is okay is normal then they must be get to the prison but according to this report it is said it is saying that 6000 people are still in prison with mental illness okay so according to the prison act of 1894 and prison act of 1900 each jail should have a welfare officer and a law officer but see yeah so according to the these two acts we have we shall have a welfare officer and a law officer in each prison but uh, they are not being hired why because low political and budgetary priorities because of low political and budgetary priorities the welfare officers and law officers are not being hired okay so that's the reason why uh, we don't find welfare officers and law officers in many jails today so what are the reforms suggested if you see Justice Amitabha Roy committee has been appointed in order to suggest the recommendations for the betterment of the prisons by the Supreme Court. So, following these are the following uh, the the following points are the suggestions given by the Justice Amitabha Roy committee. First of all, speedy trial. As far as possible, the trial has to be completed as in less time. Next, attorney to prisoner ratio. The attorney to prisoner ratio must be increased. So. So, there should be one council for every 30 inmates, okay, which is now not a case. So, one council for every 30. So, they want 1 is to 30 attorney to prisoner ratio. Then, courts of appeal. Petty offences must be uh, solved with fast track courts as far as possible, as within less time, as quick as possible, they must be uh, solved by using the special fast track courts. And for minor offences, they can be granted bail but uh, and uh, granted bail but unable to secure surety if suppose oh uh, yeah okay for those who don't know i am telling a point that even if you are granted a bail bail you will be released only if you provide a surety okay surety surety plus bail orders will are required in order to release a person from the jail so Surety means some person, some well-known person in the society must give assurance about your, uh, means uh, about your presence for the, about your presence and cooperation for the trial, okay. So that is surety and also some money, okay, in uh, surety will be also in, in the form of some money. So surety has to be given along with the bail orders in order to release. So most of the people who received the bail cannot provide the surety that's why they are still lingering in the jails that's the reason why he is saying this uh, recommendation was given that even though without the surety also they have to be released on personal recognizance bond okay now avoiding the adjournment so in case of means unnecessary adjournment should not be given in case if the witnesses are present and if everything is normal the case has to be solved as quick as possible okay so instead of giving more number of adjournments unnecessary delays the case has to be solved as quick as possible and for detainees uh, yeah because as you know the uh, in the first week in the first week of the jail life in the first week of a prison life uh, the pressure on a person is very high because they just went into the prison uh, from a free life to the uh, prison life from uh, free life to the prison life so initially they will face more amount of mental pressure that's the reason why the new prisoner should be permitted one free phone call every day to his family members generally if you see today so one call per week or one call, two or two calls per week like that they will get so initially in the first week they must be given the chance to speak with their family members every day and at the same time they must be provided with the all sort of legal assistance okay so also with vocational training and education to the inmates and use of ICT for trial video conference has to be used next 
alternatives uh, instead of send, uh, sending offenders to the jail the courts may be allowed to exercise the discretionary powers fine and admonition means as far as possible courts must provide only fine and admonition so admonition means a strong warning fine addition in addition um, admonition uh, to the petty cases in case of petty cases okay so judges may be persuaded to release the convicts on the probation before or after the trial and at the same time this is very important point very very important point you have to write filling vacancies so supreme court should order as far as possible either in the case of judiciary or in prison okay judy if you fill vacancies in judiciary the trial will become speed up and if you fill vacancies in the prison uh, the services for in the prison will uh, become better so uh, both in prison as well as in judiciary the recruitments have to be done within 3 months that must be order must be given by the supreme court so for food and modern cook facility and canteen uh, products can be purchased and uh, indian law commission proposed in 2013 that the under trials who have served one third one third of their maximum sentence of the crime uh, up to 7 years released on bail so okay so we were uh, looking about section 4 section sorry section 436a it is saying that if any person have undergone half of the total maximum punishment half of the maximum punishment prescribed by the law then he can be released on the jail during the under trial so the recommendation of indian law commission is if if the if the maximum punishment is less than 7 years or up to 7 years then if he serves one third of their maximum sentence under the trial then they can be released on bail so that was the recommendation of indian law commission okay so taking all these points into consideration uh, consideration as far as possible the government and uh, judiciary must take all the steps in order to better the in order to give better services to the prisoners right next about the solid waste management in india the landfill sites the context is the landfill sites in delhi have grown to the huge size in the recent past so if you see the current status the most of the cities are dumping right most of the cities are dumping more than the capacity of that particular land so okay pa- more than the capacity and more than the permitted height of the permitted height is 20 meters only but now if you see the mega city dump sites they are more than they are reaching more than 20 meter site okay almost 10000 hectares in india of urban land are being used for as the dumping sites so the per capita trash generation is 200 to 600 grams each day so out of which only only 22 to 28% less than 30% is being processed and treated rest of the 78 to 75 to 80% is collected without treatment only so the expansion of open rubbish dumps with no ventilation is resulting in the methane emissions you know methane is one of the greenhouse gas is methane is one of the ghg greenhouse gas so it results in the global warming by trapping the solar energy right so again the other problem is leachate problem leachate is a black liquid that seeps out of the garbage if you see gar it decomposes over 25 to 30 years it will contaminate the soil as well as ground water okay a black liquid that will form around the garbages in the garbages which will slowly seeps down into the earth and contaminates the soil as well as the ground water the other effect, uh, what are the some more effects out there about this dumping that is foul odors bad smell will come from the waste decomposing and also smokes from the flames that erupt on regular basis okay and uh, at the same time this is very important bottom liners and side liners are not being provided in the older landfills if suppose today if anyone was going to start a landfill then uh, rules are mandating the bottom lining and side lining what is the bottom lining and side lining if suppose this is the site selected then there must be before dumping the bottom as well as the sides has to be uh, f- uh, lined that means lined with some protective layer where that this leachate and everything will not percolate down will not go into the sides into the earth so as to protect the surroundings this is done bottom lining and side lining but in the older landfills we don't find the bottom lines or side lines so which allows the leachate to leak into the ground and pollute the ground water and land so because 
dump sites and most of the dump sites all the dump sites are open and publicly accessible that's why people are coming and just dumping their whatever the waste they have without any uh, obstacles right so public dumping is increasing day by day and what are the rules in india saying if you see municipal solid waste rules of 2000 are being superseded by the solid waste management rules of 2016 so most of them are uh, municipal solid waste management and handling 2000 rules of 2000 are there over which 2016 regulations have been added and these are applied to the all agglomeration census towns notified industrial townships and all so okay, what are the recommendations and what are the rules saying first of all separation at the source that means whoever generating the waste whether it is household or a company or a hospital or a school or whatever the separation or must be done at the source itself that means the household or the hospital or the school or the company or industry or whatever institution there itself you have to separate the waste like dry waste and wet waste has to be separated okay so and given to the collector i mean waste generation whoever comes to collect the waste shall receive the separated waste instead of combined waste they must receive a separate waste the manufacturer's obligation for the sanitary and packaging waste disposal and user fee has to be given more fees to the user means whoever generates the waste will be charged about the user fee for collection disposal and processing okay it also been recommended but whatever the biodegradable trash is there biodegradable trash like uh, vegetables or food waste or any other like uh, plant plants uh, plant waste food waste vegetables or whatever so whatever which is biodegradable must be processed and treated and disposed within the premises of that particular company or whatever hospital or institution so if suppose uh, imagine this is a big domestic area big domestic area having big flats and all heights of flats and all so all the families are producing uh, for example here 2000 families are staying imagine 2000 families this 2000 families will produce the waste in this waste if you separate it as wet waste and dry waste or if it is biodegradable or non biodegradable then this biodegradable trash has to be disposed processed treated and disposed somewhere within the premises only within the premises of these apartments okay this gated community then it will be easy because they can be used for composting or the biomethanation okay so and remaining whatever the garbage is there the dry garbage or non biodegradable garbage can be given to the waste collectors okay so that is how the problem can be reduced and at the same time uh, guidelines are there to uh, encourage the use of compost by the houses and also conservation of the waste into the conversion conversion of the waste into energy and also adjustment of the landfill location and capacity parameters and government established a central monitoring committee chaired by the secretary of ministry of environment food and climate change to oversee the implementation of these rules okay it is also it is already done central monitoring Com committee has already been appointed under the secretaryship of uh, ministry of environment food and climate change and if you see all the open dump sites and current in, currently operating dump sites in india must use the bio remediation and bio mining very very important points to remember technical terms bio remediation and bio mining this is nothing but separation of the uh, metals separation of the metals from the uh, the waste by using some bacteria virus and all means bio some using some chemicals biochemicals okay for safety treatment of the legacy waste for safe treatment of the legacy waste next under article 51a class g of indian constitution that is about the fundamental duties it is a fundamental duty of every indian to safeguard and improve the natural environment including the forest lakes rivers and animals as well as to have the compassion of all living earth so what to do next what are the steps to take ahead first of all you have to set explicit technical standards like bio mining bio remediation has to be get good publicity and people must get aware of what is bio mining and remediation and they must implement okay they are very superior and straightforward processes that are cost effective and environmentally acceptable 
నెక్స్ట్ థింగ్ క్యాపింగ్ సైంటిఫిక్ అండి ఇఫ్ క్యాపింగ్ ఈజ్ నెసెసరీ ఇట్ షుడ్ బి డన్ సైంటిఫికల్లీ విత్ అండర్గ్రౌండ్ పెట్స్ వాట్ మీన్స్ క్యాపింగ్ ఇన్ ద సెన్స్ ఇఫ్ దిస్ ఈజ్ ఏరియా ఇఫ్ దిస్ ఏరియా ఈజ్ సెలెక్టెడ్ ఫర్ మైనింగ్ దెన్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ టు బి బాటమ్ లైన్ ప్రాపర్లీ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ టు బి బాటమ్ లైన్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ టు బి సైడ్ లైన్ అండ్ క్యాపింగ్ హ్యాస్ టు బి ప్రొవైడ్ దట్ మీన్స్ కంప్లీట్ కవర్ హ్యాస్ టు బి ప్రొవైడెడ్ యాజ్ వెల్ యాజ్ సూటబుల్ పైప్స్ అండ్ గ్యాస్ ఎక్స్ట్రాక్షన్ ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు కలెక్ట్ ద లీచెడ్ అండ్ గ్యాసెస్ టు ఎస్కేప్ ఓకే సో దే మస్ట్ బి ప్రొవైడెడ్ విత్ సూటబుల్ పైప్స్ అండ్ గ్యాస్ కలెక్షన్ సో ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు కలెక్ట్ ద లీచెడ్ అండ్ ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు ఎక్స్ట్రాక్ట్ ద గ్యాస్ ఓకే నెక్స్ట్ డీసెంట్రలైజేషన్ మస్ట్ బి డన్ అబౌట్ ద వేస్ట్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ ద ఎగ్జాంపుల్స్ ఆర్ అంబికాపూర్ ఇన్ ఛత్తీస్గఢ్ వెల్లూర్ ఇన్ తమిళనాడు డీసెంట్రలైజ్ ద వేస్ట్ కలెక్షన్ అండ్ నౌ దే ఆర్ సీయింగ్ గుడ్ అమౌంట్ ఆఫ్ రిజల్ట్స్ లైక్ కంపోస్టింగ్ న్యాచురల్లీ అండ్ ప్లాంటింగ్ ఐ మీన్ ఆఫ్టర్ డీసెంట్రలైజ్లీ అండ్ కంపోస్టింగ్ న్యాచు కంపోస్టెడ్ న్యాచురల్లీ అండ్ దెన్ ప్లాంటెడ్ ద వేస్ట్ ఓకే సో దట్ ఈస్ హౌ దే ఆర్ సీయింగ్ ద సక్సెస్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఏరియా ఓకే ద నెక్స్ట్ టాపిక్ ఈజ్ అబౌట్ ద యూనివర్సిటీ గ్రాంట్స్ కమిషన్ గైడ్ లైన్స్ టు ట్యాకిల్ ద మెంటల్ ఇష్యూస్ అమౌంట్ ద చిల్డ్రన్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ సీ యూజీసీ హ్యాస్ ఇష్యూడ్ ఎ డ్రాఫ్ట్ గైడ్ లైన్స్ మ్యాండేటింగ్ ద ఎస్టాబ్లిష్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ డెడికేటెడ్ మెంటల్ హెల్త్ కౌన్సిలింగ్ సెల్స్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద పాయింట్ డెడికేటెడ్ మెంటల్ హెల్త్ కౌన్సిలింగ్ సెల్స్ ఎట్ ఆల్ ద కాలేజెస్ అండ్ యూనివర్సిటీస్ సో ద డ్యూటీ ఆఫ్ దిస్ మెంటల్ హెల్త్ కౌన్సిలింగ్ సెల్స్ ఈజ్ టు డీల్ విత్ అకాడమిక్ అండ్ ప్యూర్ ప్రెషర్ స్ట్రెస్ అండ్ డిప్రెషన్ అమౌంట్ ద స్టూడెంట్స్ these cells will also be required to keep a separate record of the kids who appear to be more vulnerable and more stress prone under the rules okay so uh, they are released for the public comment on wednesday so first of all the the mental health counseling cells have to be established in all colleges and universities they will deal with the academic and peer pressure stress and depression and at the same time they also keep the record of the students who are more vulnerable and stress prone and uh, uh, with this the dropout rate can also be reduced next if you see what about the guidelines and all according to the recommendations uh, headed as promotion of physical fitness sports students health welfare psychological and emotional well being okay subsequent intervention can be devised accordingly so the target of this uh, particular cell that is this mental health counseling cell is to promote the physical fitness sports students health welfare and psychological and emotional well being among the students so all the higher education education institutions must have a student service center so which deals with the stress and emotions among the students so with relevant uh, it shall be standardized this process has to be standardized systematic procedures have to be given to support the students and particularly to the students here particularly they mentioned students of rural background and female students and students from diverse cultural background and students with special needs okay so what is the major goal is to promote the physical fitness athletic activities among the students and good attitude to foster the supportive student network so the students mental health has to be strengthened in order to protect themselves from various type of stress pressure and behavioral disorders okay this is pure factual and uh, this can be used in the mains to some extent okay right next moving on to the next topic details of registrar general of india death registration shows 6% rise in pandemic year according to the figures released by the registrar general of india if you see uh, this is more important for the prelims point of view you need to get an idea of registrar general of india uh so not more than that if you see in 1951 census census organization was formed as an till 19 so before up to 1951 census organization was a ad hoc means temporary basis once it is done with census that is population counting it would be uh, removed again so whereas because in 1949 government of india formed an organization under ministry of home affairs that is registrar general and he is the ex officio census commissioner in india so to develop the systematic collection of the population size growth and other topics later on this office was also tasked with enforcing the registration of births and deaths act of 1969 
so now it has two functions so it will be acting as a registration of births and deaths body and at the same time it conducts the census so it will pro it will done it will do demographic surveys such as census of india and linguistic survey of india india census offers data on the country's population size distribution socio economic demographic and other aspects okay it will give population size distribution that is density so all the facts will be provided by the census so as of 2011 india's decennial census had been held 15 times okay till now 15 times have been completed okay so this is all about today thank you